I know a lot of people are against preloaders, but let's face it, they are not supposed to be used on any kind of website. You don't use them on an e-commerce website, you don't use them on a government website, you don't use them on serious websites. You use them on marketing websites, magazine style websites, and websites that are more artistic than information based. I love them, I think a lot of you <laughs> love them, and I will still make them. So. This is what we are building today. I think it's pretty amazing. It's made with vanilla GSAP. And I'm saying vanilla GSAP because we're not using the motion page plugin to do this. That is another story. We are still experimenting with that one. But this one is only code and anyone can use it. So let's get into it. From the dashboard, we are going to be adding the code from the custom code option in Elementor. So we're going to go to custom code. As you can see, I have a lot of <laughs> trials and errors here. So let's add a new one. And I'm just going to add a name to this. Add something descriptive so you know what it is. GSAP preloader. And I will set the location to be at the head. Why? Might be confusing because usually you would add the JavaScript at the end of anything that you have on the page. So the JavaScript la loads last, not before. So we want JavaScript in this case to load first because it's a preloader, right? So for that reason, we're going to set it at the head and I will copy paste my code and just drop it in here. And I will explain what everything means, what they do, most of them and what sh you should change or not change for that matter. All right, so it's a lot of code, but we're gonna go through and figure out things. All right, as you can see, I have them all combined style, HTML and JavaScript in one big ass code. So this portion here that is in the style brackets, tags is our CSS. And then we have our HTML structure up to here. And if you see this part here, where it says script all the way to the end is our GSAP. We're going to start with the CSS portion because this is where you're going to, or be able to change things. Uh, mostly is going to be the the look and feel of your preloader. Not everybody wants to have the same colors that I have set. So this is the way you're going to change this as well as position of the, the loader, <clears throat> the, the counter. That's it. All right. So we're going to start with the loading screen. The loading screen is basically the screen that you see on the page uh, before the loader loads. So this is where you would would want to keep this width and height to be 100% to take the width and height of the screen, basically. And what you can change here is the background color. The background color is something that you definitely want to change as well as, as I see now, I forgot to add my Z index. So if this goes without a Z index, the loading screen will be kind of mixed with the, um, the, the, the background of the website, of the website itself, with the elements of the <laughs> website. So you want your loading screen to be on top of everything. So I'm just going to add here a Z index. And I'm going to set this to be 9,999. That means that we'll sit on top of everything you have on the page, no matter what, unless you have something else that is set to that value. So you have to keep that in mind. Don't set anything on the home page to be on the hero section, especially to be higher than that. That's a rule of mine. I set everything that I want to be top of the top to 9,999. That's it. <laughs> All right. So that's about it. Nothing should be actually changed here, but the background color of your um, 
loading screen. So I'm not sure why I set this here. I'm just going to comment it out and that's it. Not going to get into that. All right. The fun part, kind of. <laughs> so this is the counter. The counter is the number that you see clocking to a hundred percent. So the position of this is going to be fixed. We want this to sit fixed on the page, obviously, although the page does not scroll. That's how we want it. And it is positioned left and bottom. As you can see, let's go a little bit and have a look. Let me see if I had it. Yeah. So it's left and bottom. We can set it here, here or here. So let's go back. You can set it to say uh, top. Um, no, you could say top here and then left here or right here and top here, bottom. You can mix and match this. So uh, what I want to say is that you can play around with this, but the best is to have it in one of the corners. I would not want it to anywhere like middle top or you can play with the height here, but for my opinion, this is the, the right height for it. Of course, you should change the font size if you want to, because it depends also on the font family that you're using. So you can change the color of the counter. You change it here. Right now it's black head as you have seen in the example I showed. Change it here. And of course the font family. Now we have reached this part where actually you should not do anything about. Now let's move on to the loader. This loader is our initial line that you see on the page. That page is the, that line is static and it doesn't change. It's only the second loader. This is the second loader that is basically showing that the, the loader is loading or the page is loading, which in our case is orange. So let's go back to this, the loader, as you can see, I have it set top and left 50% and 50%. That means that is in the center of the page. But you can adjust this. You can set the top to be zero, for example, and left 50%. And you could also change the width. You can change the height. Basically, right now it's quite tiny. You could make it bigger. You have to experiment with this. Also, of course, you can change the background color. Right now it's kind of a blackish color, but you can change it. Also, you can add or not this value here of overflow hidden. This will change the animation. So I will show you uh, once we publish this and uh, that's going to be pretty cool because you have two options. You have to play a little bit with these values and see what fits your case. All right, here, this is the HM HTML structure. Do not change anything. This is what is making the loader have the structure that it has. Uh, if you want to change this, that means that you are going to build another loader and all this, all this, and especially this needs to change. Just a warning. All right. That is pretty much all there is, uh, in all honesty. So again, uh, if you want to change anything that has to do with, uh, how the loaders are loading and basically the delay and the duration, you can play around with all this, all of this, all of this. So <laughs> if I go into changing and adjusting all this, it's going to be very confusing. I am just going to give you the code and you do what you want with it. Adjust it as if you'd feel right to you. And that's about it. There's nothing else. All right. So now we're ready to publish our preloader. Um, you have the option to either set it for the entire page. The entire page means that whenever you click any link that takes you outside of the page that you are on is going to load the preloader, then you would have to change the condition from here. So we are going to go to uh, change the condition to singular 
and that is going to be the front page so only when you click to go back home that's when the animation is triggered and that's only only then so i'm gonna just save and close now we set it only for our home page okay now i have something um cool to show you which is as i said earlier if you uncomment this overflow hidden value from here and update you will get a different kind of animation so let's have a look and you will see what i mean so it's not gonna turn vertically it's gonna switch like this i think it's cool it's a little bit different and it's nice if you'd like to see what else you can build with elementor watch this playlist here or here and if you have gotten any value out of this video Please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.